Hi guys, thanks for joining me today. I'm Marilyn. I recently posted a video of a Christmas in July box that I got from Condé Systems. And so today I'm going to go ahead and work on three of those blanks and see how I like them. Now this is just your old-fashioned jar gripper. This is a sandstone coaster. It comes like this in two pieces. You attach this, it's cork, after you've sublimated on it. And then the last thing is a car coaster. So this goes down in your car cup holder. It has cork on the bottom, so it absorbs any moisture that leaks out of your cup or condensation from your cup. This is called a Unisub Hardboard Car Coaster in gloss white. And the little divot makes it where you can pull it out of your cup holder. Okay, now here's the design I'm going to use. I used this in a recent video on a, dollar on a Dollar Tree cutting board, and I absolutely love this design. Now it looks backwards because you print most things out in reverse when you're sublimating. And then notice how this flower looks kind of bluish purple. It is not going to look like that at all when we're done. It's going to be much more vibrant, and it's going to be kind of a teal greenish blue. So some other things I'm going to use in this project are some heat gloves, scissors, a couple of Teflon sheets, some butcher paper, and some heat resistant tape. Now I've had a couple people ask me about this tape dispenser. I don't usually link to this because I found when I ordered it that when I put the tape on it, it was kind of loose. It was wobbly. Since then, I got this double-sided foam tape at the Dollar Tree store, and I've attached it on that way. So it works beautifully now, and I'll link it below. But if you get this, you're probably going to need some double-sided foam tape to really secure your roll of tape. If you're doing sublimation, I would get some type of dispenser, a nice heavy one, because you're always holding something with one hand and taping with the other. So I find a dispenser is really useful. Now I want to jump over to the computer so I can show you how I set this up in Inkscape. Here's the design that I'm going to use today. And it's a design that I used on a Dollar Tree cutting board and I had found it on Pinterest. Well, I wanted to know where it came from, and someone that watched the video sent me a message and let me know where to find it. And so today, I went ahead and purchased it. Now here's a template of my three projects in Inkscape. I made circles a little larger than my substrate, and then I put the design in the middle of the circle. What this will do is, it'll allow me to lay my substrate down on the circle, You'll see the circle slightly outside of it, and that's going to help me center it. And I'll show you more what I mean as we go through the video. The other important thing is make sure that you mirror your image from most sublimation projects. Once in a while, when you're going to put it on the bottom of something and it appears through the top, you don't mirror it. But for most all things, you do. Now, I went ahead and printed this out. So let's move over to the heat press and we'll get started on our projects. Now one last thing before we start on the projects, I did want to point out this design has this little gray thing down here. So what I did in Inkscape is I went ahead and erased this. Okay now that we're ready to work on the project, I'm just going to rough cut these out. And then I'll start with the jar gripper. Now here's where the circle comes in handy. Once you put your substrate down, you cannot see <laughs> where the design is. So if there's no circle around it, you're kind of peeking and you're peeking and you're hoping it comes out great. But I found make a circle that's a little bit larger than your substrate and that will really help your centering improve. Okay, I'll go ahead and put down some of this heat tape. 
and then we're just going to repeat the process. Now on my sandstone coaster, I did use some alcohol and I cleaned it off. And I realized I should have lint rolled this. So I'm going to pull that back off and lint roll it before it goes under the heat press. Okay, now this little guy I'm a little worried about because when I watched the video, <laughs> it said there was a protective coating on this. But I tried and tried and tried to get one off of here and I didn't want to use my weeding tool and really scrape hard. I was afraid I'd scratch the substrate. So hopefully this one works. If there is a protective coating on there, well, then I probably will have ruined it but I just could not figure out how to get it off. So I'm going to guess it really doesn't have one on it. Okay, let's go over to the heat press and we'll see how these turn out. I'm going to start with the jar opener and I have my heat press set to 400 degrees. I'll heat it for 60 seconds and the instructions also say to use light pressure. So I went ahead and decreased the pressure on my heat press. Now this is a heat press that I got off of Amazon.com. I'll put a link to this in the video description in case you're interested in checking it out. This comes with some removable pads. The nice thing is if you have to rotate anything, you can just leave your substrate on them and turn them. And these little dots you see, those are in the material. It came that way. So I'm gonna start with a large Teflon sheet. Any size Teflon sheet that's larger than my substrate will do. Then I'm gonna go ahead and put a piece of butcher paper down to protect my, to protect my Teflon sheet and the mats that came with the heat press. Now I see my project is a little off-centered. Let me go ahead and fix that. Then another sheet of butcher paper on top. And then finally one more Teflon sheet. Okay guys, after I shut that, I realized I put my substrate in upside down. So I'm going to try to be really careful, give it a few extra seconds, peek at it and see what I have. Okay, fortunately it came out just fine. Maybe it'd be just a little bit more vibrant, but I think adding the extra time helped so it could get through the back of the material. Okay, I'm going to move on to the sandstone coaster. This time I'll put it in right side up. Now this one says medium pressure, 400 degrees for 1 minute and 30 seconds. So let me go ahead and cover up my substrate. Then I need to tighten up my heat press. All right, now that I think about it, that coaster is a lot thicker than the last thing I did, so it's probably going to be just fine. Maybe even <laughs> still too much pressure. Let's see. Now, I like to put one hand down to put some pressure on it while I'm taking other things off so it doesn't slide around and cause any ghost.
Now the last one was the little car coaster. This is the one that might have protective film on it or it might not. We're going to find out now. Now on my heat press I like to put a little pressure down while I'm lifting the platen. That can help it from jumping, which can also cause some ghosting. Now the good news is I can see some ink through the back of that paper. So I think that the protective coating was already removed and I think we're fine. Now the last thing I need to do is put the back on this and then I want to give you a couple of parting thoughts. I am absolutely in love with this and my car coaster. Now notice most of the ink is off those. Then compare that to the one that I messed up <laughs> and had it upside down. So the heat had to go all the way through this backing. And I think it's just not as vibrant. It's my fault. See the difference there? So here's what I'm going to do. It's not going to turn out well because <laughs> I'm never going to get it lined up exactly. But I'm going to put this back on here. I'm going to put it under the right temperature flip it the right way, and I'll see if this darkens up again. It may not show up on camera really well. There is a little ghosting, but it still looks very nice. And I love this design, so I'm going to use it anyway. Thanks again for joining me. I'll see you next time.